having a good Easter? Hope so. Um, <clears throat> I really enjoyed Jamie's talk on Wednesday. It was a cracker. What he said was, there's nothing else in this life than Jesus Christ. And all people said, Amen. praise the Lord. Just find my talk here. Um, I, I gave a talk a little while ago and it was um, about a song and the three things on it were peace like a river, joy like a fountain and love like an ocean. And that was a song. And uh, I wanted to try and bring in the Easter theme into this joy like a fountain. So we'll see how we go. Um, and I want to, you know, it was amazing, you know, when Jesus got crucified and he rose again, the first person he went to or the first person he spoke to was Mary, Mary of Magdala, named Magdalene. She was the first person that Jesus spoke to when he rose again. Praise the Lord. Um, Mary was mentioned 12 times in the Gospels, even more than some of the disciples. She had seven unclean spirits cast out of her. You know, i got no idea what that would have been like. But the gratitude that Mary had made her stick to Jesus and the disciples and with all the other women like glue. You know, we hear that story about the boy um, where Jesus said, you know, where's your faith? And this little boy used to, well, he was probably grown a little bit then, he, he used to roll in the fire and that, his whole life he, he was looked after and cared for and he had um, evil spirits in him. Well, I re uh, read that story about that guy um, who used to live in the tombs and he had chains put on him and he broke the chains and he, and he was naked and he was just out of control and this guy was just unbelievable. And he said he had, um, I don't know, I don't think it says how many, but it, it was many. And his, um, what was the name he said? Legions. And, uh, you know, just the, the transformation of that guy, you know, being uncontrollable and, and not knowing his own mind and then just being calm. You know, and this is this story about Mary of Magdalene who had seven spirits in her. You know, I can just depict her. She wouldn't have been in a right mind. She would have had sores and scrapes all over and wouldn't be in a very nice place. So the point is the gratitude that she had, that what she felt, the love that she had for the Lord, she was there that morning looking for him. And we'll just pick it up in um, John 20. John 20, start off in 11. I'm going to make another lectern one day. One for my size. <laughs> um, yeah, pick it up in verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. And saith and saith to and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they 
have laid him. She wanted to see Jesus. She, she, she wanted, like these women went and, like there was two Sabbaths and the first Sabbath was the Jubilee Sabbath and they went and, and, and put ointments and things on him. And, you know, they went back and they wanted to see him and she just didn't know where he was. Where is my saviour? Where's my Lord? Um, had laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposed him to be a gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast bore him or taken him or um, put him somewhere else, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, now just imagine what would have happened in her mind, in her heart, in her soul. Jesus said unto her, Mary, bang, straight away, that instant connection, the Lord let her see her. And she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say master. And then so on, Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I uh, ascend unto my father and the father, uh, hang on. I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Imagine Mary's elation. Imagine Mary's joy when, she, when he said Mary. She just turned around, wasn't even looking at him, was looking away from him, spun around and recognised him and said, Rabboni, master. What an amazing event. What well, you know, to bring in the other talk, what would she be feeling? Joy like a fountain, maybe? Amen. Joy like a fountain. Now, to look at a fountain, because I've got to bring this in. Can you remember the Canberra fountain over there, that great big one? Have you ever gone near it? You can't get really close, close to it, but you get saturated. I don't know. I was going to look it up, but I don't know how many gallons of, or litres of water it pumps out. But can you imagine trying to stop it? You'd probably lose your hand. And um, these fountains, this joy that we have, when we get this inexpressible joy and we just bubble up and we just are so thankful for what the Lord's done for us, you know, I've seen people who have witnesses and they just do not be quiet. They're just bubbling over like a fountain. So I had a um, water clean, a brick cleaning business back in the day. And um, I used to have about 3,000 PSI in this machine. And it used to take every single bit of concrete off the bricks. It used to clean it clean as a whistle. You had to put acid on it and so forth. But if you put your hand in front of it, it, it nearly cut you really bad. Water is the one thing that you can't compress. Have you seen those great big cutters that cut through steel about three inches thick and make intricate patterns? This is the fountain. This is the joy I'm talking about. Nothing stops your joy. Nothing gets in front of your joy. Your joy bubbles up and it just whoo, comes out like a fountain. Praise the Lord. Um, let's have a look in Luke 24. This could be a long talk or it could be a quick one. Luke 24 and in verse 10. And it was Mary Magdalene and uh, Joanna or Jonah and Mary, the mother of James and other women that were with them. 
which told these things unto the disciples, unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they beheld them not. They dismissed it. What are you talking about? Risen again, Jesus. You saw, you saw the, you saw the Messiah. You saw the Christ. You saw the Rabboni, the Master, the Teacher. You saw him, and how come we didn't see him? They dismissed it. Not good old Pete. What did he do? He heard it. He might have dismissed it, but he had to have a look. What does it say here? Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre and stooped down. He held, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed wondering in himself at, wit, at what which was come to pass. As he would, you know, he must have been going, where, what? These things I just heard, they've got to be true. They've got to be true. Where is he? And they're looking, and he's looking for him. This is the guy that held the right hand of God and was led back to the boat on the water. All these scriptures must have flooded into his mind, you know. And what did he have? What did he have? He had joy like a fountain. And all the people said, let's have a look in Luke 24. Oh, we're in 24, aren't we? <laughs> okay, we'll go down a bit to... Um, we'll read on from 13, I think. And behold... Oh, yeah, this is, this is one of my favourite stories. And behold, two of them went that same day to the village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. Anyone know how long that is? About 3.9 miles. That's 0.9 of a mile over the legal Sabbath journey. But it was Sunday, so it was all right. Now, um, and they talked together of all the things which had happened and it would have been absolutely amazing when they were talking about all these things. The whole town would have been a, a buzz. And it came to pass that while they communed together and um, reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden, their eyes were shut that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communication are these that ye have one with another? Are ye, and ye walk and are sad. And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, answering, saying to him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? So everybody was no, known about what was going on. Art thou a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all men. And now the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to, the, uh, to be condemned to death. And was crucified and crucified him. But we trust that it been which should have, and so on and so forth. And um, we'll pick it up in um, found not the body. I want where, where he was, he was going to walk away. Well, here we go. And he and he said all this to him. and. And, and you'd think, oh, you poor guys, you've been through so much. What did he say down in 25? Oh, fools and slow of heart, you know, to, be, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ have suffered these things and 
to um, enter into his glory. And then he's just started to talk about all the things and beginning at Moses and the prophets and so on and so forth. And, and down in 28, and they drew near unto the village, whether they went, and he made as though he would uh, go further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went into their, uh, and he went and tarried with them. And it came to pass, and he sat down to meet with them to, to take bread and bless it and break it and gave it to them. And what happened? And their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And what did they say? And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn with, with, within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened up to the scriptures? You know, how would it feel? It's exactly like a, like a fountain, I tell you. What joy would they have in their heart? We were just speaking to the rabbi. We were just speaking to the teacher then. Praise the Lord. And what did they do? This was at night time. Don't go any further, Jesus. Come in with us. It's really dangerous out on the streets. What did they do because of their joy? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the 11 gathered together and so forth and so forth. And he, and he appeared to them and he said, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. And they was really peaceful then, weren't they? But they were terrified and afraid, affrighted. Oh, imagine this, this, Jesus just <clears throat> straight away there. Oh, my goodness. Don't be afraid. Oh, yeah, right. It's easy, it's easy to say, but. When something happens, well, like there's been times when I've been in boats out in waters, I've been affrighted. Aeroplanes. Yeah, aeroplanes have frighted me. Um, <laughs> all sorts of things where you just have to rely on the Lord. And, um, and these guys were terrified. Um, uh, suppose they have seen a spirit and he said unto them, why are you troubled? And he said, had to talk, talk to him and explain what is happening. You know, it was absolutely an amazing time. What happened to these guys? What happened to the women? What happened to the guys? That they just, they, it was unra unraveling, unfolding. You know, they were remembering scriptures. These things were happening. This is what the Lord was talking about. And right down here in... Um, We'll be in, in uh, Luke now, 24. We'll re read, go down to th down into 40, 49. And behold, I sent the promise of my father upon you. Um, oh, hang on. Go back to where he says, stay in Jerusalem. Repent. <laughs> Well, we'll go into 48. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I sent this promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye. This is a this is what he's tell, promising them. The promise of the Holy Spirit. They didn't have the Holy Spirit yet. Jesus hadn't gone home and released the Holy Spirit. Um, upon you to tarry ye in, in the city of Jerusalem until you be endured, clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany and he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into the heaven. You know, half of you will be saying, this is our redemption from Israel leaving us. What The Romans are going to take over and we'll be done for but they weren't quite into that spiritual realm yet. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, joy like a, river, a fountain, and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God, amen, as you would. 
Hallelujah. It's, just, it's like when, when we have a really good camp and we deny all the things that we're used to and we go to camp and we focus and concentrate on the one thing that is important in our lives and that is Jesus Christ risen again and sent back the Holy Spirit and he gave us this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit and we can talk to him in this language of men and angels. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when you focus on that, and forget about everything else, it just fills you full of joy, doesn't it? Um, where are we? Let's go and have a look in. Um, so this is the, these guys and what they felt and what they and this is what they got later on when it was axe, axe time, when the axe come down. Acts one twelve. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Bartholo uh, Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot and Judah, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of men together were about 120. The number of the name, uh, the number of names together were about 120. Praise the Lord, 120 people. Men and brethren, this scripture must be, needs uh, be fulfilled with the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David and so forth and so on. Just painting the picture here with this elation, this excitement. I'm not sure how long it was until that Easter, until the, the day of Pentecost was. Anyone know? That time time period. Was it 50 days from, from there? So they had 50 days um, to consider what had happened to go through the scriptures, to discuss. You know, no wonder there was 120 disciples or 120 people up in that upper room discussing and praying. This is what was told about. P Peter got up, unlearned it and everything. This, this is what was told in the, in the, by the prophets. Can you imagine the excitement and the elation and the joy? You know, something amazing is going to happen. Jesus told us to wait here. We're waiting here. This is the time. Something's going to happen. Down in chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. And we all know that's where the power is. We can have a form of godliness, but if we deny the power thereof, then we don't, we don't, we're not clothed. We don't get the promise. We're not clothed. We're not endured. We don't have this wonderful power inside of us. Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, Acts 2.4 and yeah, you know, that's the point I was going to make. This power that makes us stand up, this power that makes us talk to people. It's like when, remember when Peter was um, with the Lord and he said, do you love me, Peter? Go and feed my sheep. When he, when he was saying, do you love me? He's saying, do you agape me? And, and Peter's saying, yes, I phileos you. So he's talking brotherly love and Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit and spiritual love, and this is when he finally got it. And he said, I'll never leave you. And then he denied him on the day of when he was crucified. But then he stood up and told these people. He had no fear. 
He had no regret or remorse or anything. He was just, bang, he had the Holy Spirit. This power that rose Christ from the dead was living in him along, as, along with all these other people. This is the transformation of a life, anyone's life. And this is what gives us that joy like a fountain that wells up. Like, let's have a look in... Um, John 7. Lost me a little thing. Now I'm going to have to look for it. John 7. John 7. John 7. So this is, in every talk, I usually heads towards me. So this is about me now. Um, John 7, 38. Now, when I come to the Lord, I read and I was told and it was a testimonies of first-hand experience of people that had received the Holy Spirit and it was enthralling. It was intriguing. It was an amazing thing. And I, I say it all the time that um, I, I knew all the old stories and everything. It was, it was, it was Jeff who told me about there was what receiving the Holy Spirit's like, and it's like when Moses went up to the Mount Sinai and then he came back down and the people couldn't even look at him. That's what it's like when you receive the Holy Spirit. There's an amazing power. And so I come along and I just I got bap baptised and it was three weeks later and it was up in this back room and we were kneeling down and there was Chippo and I think Jeff and someone else and and Craig, Pastor Craig here, before he was a pastor, and um, we were praying away, and all I could hear was Craig, and I just, I thought, I'm going to say what he says. And I, I couldn't even get a quarter of a syllable out, and then Wooshka, this Holy Spirit, just came in, filled me full, and out come this language, and I just, it was amazing. I don't know what happened, but I was a big, tough biker then, and, and I, I just tears of joy were streaming out of my eyes. It was just amazing. And, um, and this scripture is exactly how I felt. And we'll read it in 38. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures hath said, out of his belly shall rivers, will flow rivers of living water it was just like a fountain just whooshka, just praying in this holy ghost experience it was amazing and um like you like you see people coming down these stairs after being spirit filled and baptized and you you know you wouldn't doesn't matter what you do to them they'll still have the smile on their face they'll still be rejoicing they'll still have that elation you can't stop it. You can't stop a fountain. You can't stop the Holy Spirit. If the Lord decides to give you the Holy Spirit, you've got it. And it is a wonderful experience. And that's just like that rivers of living water welling up from your innermost being and coming out. And that's the power. This is why Easter had to be. This is why Jesus gave his life so that we may have this wonderful gift. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, let's have a look in First Peter. I think this is the last scripture. <coughs> First Peter one seven. Let's just pick it up a little bit further up. Let's pick it up in number three, verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by res resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, praise the Lord, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and fadeth not away, res reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be 
revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifest temptations. Things come against us. We turn to the Lord for his strength. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold, than precious um, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of our at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love. In whom there are, know ye not, see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Praise the God. Praise God. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul of which salvation the prophets have inquired and diligently, a search diligently. Amen, eh? How was it when we received the Holy Spirit? This power that comes surging through every cell of our body, we can now with un speakable joy, full of grace. You know, there's nothing that we can do ever that can repay. There's nothing that we can physically do in our weak, carnal minds, bodies, that can do anything to repay what we have got. But if we keep diligent in obeying and loving the Lord, then we'll be there on that day. So keep your fountains full of joy, and all the people said.